You know when you play a video game and you unlock a new character or a new ability and you're running around and you do something, you're like, bah, 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 bah. you're like, damn, that was cool. And the game pops up and it's like, you've unlocked this, or you've unlocked this, or you ranked up. Well, that's kind of how I feel about my shop and how I've grown as a business. And I won't talk about it. The way that my hobby started was by building a eight foot long cherry dining room table. Never built any type of furniture before, but me and my wife had a small two bedroom house with a small dining room where I thought we're gonna fill this whole thing up with a table. So I found some locally rough saw cherry, had a cabinet shop plan it down for me, and I went out and I bought my very first set of tools for my then, quote, hobby. I bought a rigid miter saw. I've had the same saw now for seven years. Bought a pocket hole set that has one of them. A speed square, some drills, and a tape measure. This was pretty much my basic set of tools. And I built an entire table out of it. And I was so proud. I didn't even have a sander. I hand sanded everything. So I was working from like 50 grit, 80 grit, all the way up to 220 grit. And I built it in the carport of our house. We had like a little covered carport. I built that entire eight foot table in that carport and I was extremely proud of how that thing turned out. You can see it right here. Me and my wife had moved out of our two bedroom house with our massive eight foot table into another house. And this house had a garage and I was so excited. Now at this point, Clark Street Woodworks was still just a hobby. There was no business thing, there was nothing official, still just a hobby. Well, my aunt reached out to me and she's like, hey, can you build a set of cornhole boards? I was like, you know what? Sure, easy peasy. So then I went out and I bought my next tool. My next tool was a Dewalt skill saw or a circular saw. And that way I was able to rip down plywood and cut stuff a whole lot easier. And I customized a set of cornhole boards and man, they look badass. Posted those on Facebook and that grew like wildfire. That was shared and sent to everybody and we ended up making probably close to 20 sets of cornhole boards by the time it was all said and done and that really kind of escalated our publicity and awareness in our community as to like what i could do what i could make and i start i decided that with that amount of cornhole boards i could set aside so much per set and start having some capital that i could put towards a shop and at that point we started getting a little bit more official. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give to a small business or a woodworking business or any like arts and crafts thing is to lean on friends and family. Make them stuff, build them stuff. If they ask for something, make it for them. Post pictures, take pictures. And then that way, if their friends come over or they can tell their friends and your, your publicity and your audience grows for the more stuff you make. And this is where the live edge table part of the business comes into play. We were still not official yet. We were still just a hobby, but a family member was like, hey, can you build me a live edge table? And I said, sure, why not? I had no idea how to make one. Never made a live edge table. Didn't even know where to fucking start. But found a local sawmill and got a piece of poplar that was I think three, four foot long. I did not kiln dry. Didn't even think about kiln dry. Didn't know what that was. I didn't check moisture. I had no idea. I was like, fuck it, it's fine. It's a piece of wood, it's, it'll stay where it is. And I went out and I invested in the next tool that I needed. And that was a router. At the time, I had a Dewalt router. Nah, not this one, because I've burned up several. But I done my research and I found out that I needed to make a router slit so I could play my slabs. So I built this big, nice router sled in the garage that was getting sawdust everywhere. And I planed down this live edge slab. And I was so excited. I was like, my family members are gonna love it. This thing was ugly as sin. I hated it when I was done with it. it had square legs on it that I sanded down with my hand because I still didn't have a sander at that point in time. And I was like, you know what? I'm learning, this is good, she's gonna love it. So I finished it up. Posted those pictures on Facebook, and then things took off so fast. And just so you can actually see how bad this thing turned out, here's a picture as to what that first live edge table looked like. So 
So after we posted all those pictures and stuff all over social media, we had a lot of requests coming in for bigger furniture, and I was excited. The downside is I didn't have space in the garage anymore to continue to work. So me and my wife had an old outbuilding on her property that the sides were falling in. It didn't have power or anything like that. It didn't even have a level concrete floor. So we decided to redo it. So we got to work, tore all the sides off, ran power, ran electricity, put new tin sides on, built all the shelving on the inside, and made this thing the shop as to what it is now. And it was so much fun. And when I turned the power on to the building for the first time, I couldn't tell you. That was like a dream come true for me, just having my own wood shop to do things in. And I was like a kid in a candy shop, man. I was ready to go. I was ready to eat and get some work done. So at this point, after we had the building finished for tax purposes and other things, I decided to go ahead and actually legally form our business. So we became Clark Street Woodworks LLC and started making the logos and the social media sites and all that type of thing. And then I felt myself kind of leveling up, getting better, getting to that professional level that I wanted to be at. So after we got the shop built, I had two table orders come through, one for a white farmhouse table and one for an embrosure maple table. And at that time, I knew that I needed a planer to actually work some of this wood. So I went out and bought a DeWalt 734, 12 and a half inch wide planer, and I loved it, I was pumped. But I fucked up. The first two tables that ever come out of this shop were complete train wrecks of a project. The Ambrosia Maple Table, which is actually one of the very first YouTube videos that I made, I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna go back and watch it. I didn't kiln dry. So about two months after delivery, powder post beetles started crawling up out of that tabletop and made a mess. So I took it, I talked to the customer, I went and got the table, had it treated, kiln dried, refinished, and I took it back to her. And she loved the table and didn't have any issues outside of that. So I still got a five star review, thankfully, just because of customer service and reaction time. And we have a great relationship now and it's, it's awesome. Second table was a white farmhouse table. And this thing turned out absolutely beautiful. I was proud of it. My first set of breadboards and I was pumped. And I'll show you a picture of it right here. But the downside of that is I used wet pine and we took it to the customer. She fell in love with it. Two months later, everything started expanding and contracting. Paint chipped, caused issues. And I had to go pick that table up, brought it back to my shop, looked at it, realized it was a complete failure. So scrapped an entire table, rebuilt our brand new table. Everything is so much better and then took it back. Once again, luckily I got a five star review for customer service and reaction time and fixing the issue when it happened and not dragging it out. And so that was the very first two mistakes, very costly mistakes that I had come out of the gate of opening the shop. So after taking those two shots on the chin of messing up the first two table orders that came out of this shop, I knew I had to take a step back. I was rushing things. I wasn't thinking things through. I was wanting to get customer orders in and out instead of focusing on what really mattered. So I still had to do woodworking projects for customers that wanted woodworking, and I still had to learn more woodworking. So there was a whole lot of things going on in my mind as to how to balance it and try to make this process easier, more efficient, better, and end up with better quality at the end. So I started talking around, started watching a lot more YouTube videos, started talking to locals about their wood shops and how they do things. Started talking to some old timers and how they do things. I found some kilns. And at that point, my shop physically wasn't expanding or equipment wasn't expanding, but my knowledge of what to do was. And that made me so much more valuable coming out of the gate. And on top of all that, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and throw in one more just equation into my mind and really fuck up my whole mental state at that point in time. And that was the epoxy. And I wanted to learn epoxy because I knew from a woodworking perspective at that time, a few years ago, that epoxy was starting to grow. The epoxy rivers, the tabletops, all the creative side of woodworking that you can have with epoxy. So I knew I wanted to get into that. And I made tons of mistakes with that. I messed up molds. I had stuff leak. I didn't know the right type of epoxy to use. I didn't know the right pigments to use. And I spent a lot of money trying to learn epoxy. But once I mastered that, mastered, I knew that that would open up a whole new revenue of things for me to make and to add to our repertoire as a business. So I took the time, I took the hits on the chin, I made the mistakes with the first couple tables. But from that, I knew like my mental state as far as woodworking and confidence in myself at that point, I went from like a level five up to like a level 80 mage. I was ready to just go. 
So the, all that momentum of learning new types of things of epoxy, better live edge work, better joinery, better woodworking skills, just overall knowledge, we started to thrive. We made tables with epoxy rivers and tree trunk bases. We made an eight foot long exterior table with log bases. We made all kinds of stuff, a king size bed frame, full epoxy desk with walnut, just all kinds of things. And I'll kind of show those right here just so you can get a quick glimpse of all the stuff we made. And at that point in time, my theory and my business motto was, if it's a crazy idea, give it to us, we'll make it. I wasn't scared of a challenge and I'm still not. And I think that's one of the reasons we've been so successful is I'm not afraid to look at customer and say, yeah, you know, we'll try, sure. And we'll give it our best shot. And somehow, some way, at the very end, the product always turns out absolutely fantastic. After making all these crazy projects, I went through some equipment. I would burned up a skill saw. I ruined a few routers. I would burned up a couple table saws, like the job site saws, trying to cut hardwood. And I knew that I had to get some a few things to make the shop more efficient and quit wasting money on, mach on machinery. So I broke down and got a <laughs> Makita track saw. I knew I wanted that for a long time and I knew that it would be an essential part of my business and just a work hog as far as carrying a lot of the workload in the shop. So I broke down about that. I learned how to use it correctly, took the time. It took me a couple of days and a few reps to learn how to do different joinery, different cuts, make good square cuts and everything like that. But since I had that, my quality of work as far as joinery goes has went through the roof. And no, I do not have a big joiner yet, mainly just for floor space, but that will come in the future, I promise. So people may say, oh, Zach, how'd you burn up your job site saws? Well, that's because I was running walnut and oak and cherry and several, several things through a table saw that should not be ran through. And I was like, you know what? I have some capital saved up. And at this point, I had invested a lot of time in myself, a lot of time in the shop, a lot of time in the business. And I wanted something that I knew could hold up to that workload. So I broke down and got this bad boy. The Laguna F3 Fusion. And man, when this ain't coming the door on in a crate, I felt like I made it to big time. I felt like I struck gold and I was ready to become a professional, true woodworker. And I was so, so excited. And I know I've said that a lot in this video, but you have no idea, truly, how much excitement I've built up over time is to doing this. See that? It's a 114 year old booze block. We're gonna rework that thing. Somebody, somebody had the confidence to let me redo that for them. Speaking of confidence, the confidence that customers have in me to build their projects and to spend the amount of money that they have is insane. And I cannot be thankful enough for that because without customers, none of this would have been possible at all. So with customers, to put their confidence in a stranger to build their dream piece of furniture is absolutely outstanding. And I cannot say thank you enough. So if you've enjoyed this little brief moment of history from when I started in, in a carport up to now, hit that little subscribe button and I can always go in more detail in future videos and we'll have fun videos of doing stuff like this. And I want to get more into the content world just because I truly enjoy it. So if you enjoyed this or you want to see more of the things that we've built over time, head on to this head on over to Instagram at Clark Street Woodworks. Check us out. Follow us there and I will see you on the next one.